probably wondering how an artist like me manages to stay stable financially, physically, and mentally while quote unquote unemployed. An artist to people presumably already does not make that much money and living in a high cost of living city such as Los Angeles while not being paid on a regular basis during a dry job market probably might freak some people out, but I'm here to tell you why I personally am not. So to answer at least one of the questions, how I stay stable mentally. I've been starting off my days with taking care of plants, which is something I've honestly never done before. As an artist, most of our careers originally started off as hobbies, and that fades away once it becomes your way of making a living. It's unhealthy to merge your identity and value to your career, and while art is a part of me, it's not all of me. So to maintain this balance, I have to find new hobbies hobbies and interests that have nothing to do with drawing, painting, or creating things. Doing this first thing in the morning primes my day with a more calming mindset instead of immediately diving into work. But right after that, I start getting into emails and posting whatever I need to do that day. New viewers here may wonder what I do for work, and one of the things I do is post comics and videos on Instagram and YouTube. I don't directly get paid for sharing comics, but it helps bring in the traffic to help promote my other works. So today I'm posting a reel to promote an upcoming graphic novel I'm trying to pitch to publishers. And another thing that has been keeping me sane is doing the artist's way. Honestly, I've been stuck in limbo between weeks four and five of this book, but I continue to do the morning pages every day. As someone from the animation industry, my art has been very conditioned to fit what studios want, but now that I'm working more independently as a graphic novelist and creator, I have to unlearn a lot of things I learned in animation school and working in the industry. I'm not saying I'm forgetting everything I learned completely, but just knowing to put these skill sets aside to make room for new skills is important when and pivoting. Doing the artist's way has been a great way of allowing me to remember what I even do with my creativity and art skills without my animation career being a part of the picture. What I do physically so that I can mentally handle the instability of not just work, but life is working out. And lately my boyfriend and I have been just hitting the gym together. Making a living with your art without the stability of a weekly pay can be daunting to a lot of people. And taking the independent route is honestly a time in life where you need to keep the negative thoughts down as much as possible. This is also the time where most of my best ideas come and I can refresh my brain as to how I want to strategize my day now that I don't have a structure given by a job. So one of the more recent forms of income that was introduced to me literally this year was traveling abroad while also hosting workshops or mentorships, which is very new to me. But this is another reason why I'm just kind of super grateful to be alive in the day and age of the internet and social media despite its occasional frustrations. Because an opportunity like this wouldn't have been brought up if I didn't start my Instagram, YouTube, and do this all on the side while I worked in animation, just so that by the time I don't have an animation job, this is the thing I can fall back on. And I'm not gonna complain about being able to travel to Japan and South Korea as my backup plan. So for those of you who don't know, we have an up and coming art retreat in South Korea where we will pretty much be going on an art career journey while well, exploring Seoul and Busan. So if you are someone who has been wanting to meet a community of artists and also travel in another country while we discuss our art goals, draw and sketchbooks together, there are still around less than 10 spots left. I would highly recommend you sign up before they disappear because there's only 24 people max per trip. So that's what I was pretty much working on was just the little discord group to set up for the South South Korea trip. Currently we have two Japan Discord groups that are already up and running and it's been great to kind of, you know, get to know everyone, have everyone introduce themselves, share their art goals and where they're coming from and also, you know, arrange travel plans so that by the time we meet up it's not like 
awkward. <laughs> but assuming that everything goes well on these trips, I would love to do more of these in the future because traveling, as you can see, has been what really influences my art. And to be able to do this in the future would be really great as an independent artist. But for people who can't attend a trip like this, I also do Patreon email consultations in which for this past month of April, I'm sending people custom drawings as thanks for their support. While I don't ever do commissions, it is nice to actually draw things for people, especially those who I've grown familiar with the art journeys of this past year. And this month of May marks one year since I've done Patreon email consultations. Hopefully these drawings get delivered safely to everyone. And if you'd also like to receive a consultation where I now send video recordings of me going over your work or any questions you have, there are only three spots left and the link is down below. Anyway, going back to my more quote unquote traditional work, another stream of income that plays a bigger role is publishing graphic novels. Last year, I released Mish the Bad Demon Volume 1, and now Volume 2, The Secret of the Fang, is scheduled to be released on July 23rd, 2024. But now I'm also moving on to a young adult graphic novel that I'm getting ready to pitch to publishers. So while I've been doing social media stuff, I've also been still working on graphic novels that that I both write and illustrate. To some people, working on graphic novels is non-traditional, while to me as a person who also creates content for social media, graphic novels feel slightly more traditional because you're still working with a bigger company, but more so on freelancing terms. The way you get paid is through milestones, meaning anytime you complete a major step of your book, you get paid upon completion of that. So while I haven't been receiving a weekly pay, it's more like I'll have a big fat check that usually ranges from $1,000 to $30,000 come in at moments where I either complete a part of my book or a deal was made for my book internationally. So the way I started to view my income was more on a yearly basis instead of a monthly or weekly basis. So one of the biggest fears for artists taking the leap of faith into the independent world is the instability of income and how you wouldn't be paid on a weekly basis anymore. It took me some time to get over that discomfort, but really the only way to overcome it is by actually living your life for a few months to a year, living without that weekly pay and still realizing that things are fine. I've realized how this is so ingrained in us as a society to need to get paid either weekly or or monthly that even rich people still feel that discomfort when they have so much money saved up yet still feel the need to generate revenue weekly or monthly but this fear of that discomfort could hold you back from making choices that are more aligned with what you want to do with your life of course this comes with having saved enough money that you can afford these gap periods of no pay which is why i do encourage people to work a full-time job for some time to build a financial runway for your creative endeavors so now my mindset is more so of how can I better use my time and take on creative projects that actually align with what I like doing and hopefully when those projects are seen through the revenue generated through that would have just matched what I would have made if I worked a regular full-time animation job or even more. So of course, another benefit I personally like from working independently is the ability to reclaim my time and choose to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I personally know I'll be responsible to get things done on time, and I think one of my strengths is knowing how to intuitively balance work and life. So tonight, I'm going to head out to Little Tokyo with my friend Nor, who some of you might know, and just eat some good sushi to celebrate a day of hard work. And that's a day in my life. So if you want to see what a day in my life looks like in one of my previous videos while unemployed, check out this video here and I will see you all in the next one.